So I don't know what went wrong in this electrolysis process, but I, for some reason, don't remember this anvil having so much pitting. So I've got a little bit of time, so I'm gonna put these three little anvils in the dip. This is just a thing I've shown you guys before. It's just Chinese cast iron. This is a paperweight, but um, heel's broken off, so I'm gonna just try and see what I can do there. Um, I'm not gonna use nickel rods there. I'm gonna try my stainless, my 309, see if it works. I'll preheat it, build it up, tap it all nice and hard with a hammer. If it breaks off, it breaks off, and I know I need to get nickel rods. But anyway, I need to get nickel rods anyway for the other animals that I need to fix. And then obviously a little Trenton. Um, I'm gonna just dip this, and then the PFP, I'll put those in the dip, and then I'll tie those all up with a chain, and then I'll tie all of these fullers and stuff together. Um, the ones with handles, the handles are not terrible. It's pretty, pretty bad, but I mean, for the work that they do, it's, I guess, not that bad. So the ones with handles, then I'll just wire brush those, uh, drilling machine with a wire wheel, and I'll just get as much as off as I can, and then I'll obviously make them pretty like that. The rest, though, I'll just tie a chain through them and then put them all in the dip. Um, if I'm going to run the dip, might as well run it. So yeah, um, that's the plan here. Um, pretty much just trying to get stuff that I don't have to work on. So, I mean, I'll put these in, the, the, the electrolysis runs, and then it's a little bit of time to clean them up and, and get them um, rust converted and sealed off with linseed oil. But um, yeah, it's not like a huge amount of work. Um, the work that I am planning on doing though, you'll see I rearranged this a little bit since uh, we last saw it in the last video. I've put your Hans anvils over here so that I'm like, when I'm videoing Johan's anvils, that's where Johan's anvils will be. Um, obviously his first one is gonna be this one over here. You can see the edges are actually really not that bad. I might run a bead or two, you know, just to get them nice and crisp. I'll ask him what he wants. Um, then the, I can't, I should have actually put this on backwards so I could have shown you guys the chip. And um, you can't really see that chip all that well. There you go. So that's quite a big old chip out of that face so that's what i have to fix on that but nothing else he doesn't want me to touch it i must just get it also nice and gray gray silver like steel you know seal it off with and seal so it looks really nice and then that's it that's all i must do there and then these are the two of my most favorite animals um the vulcans you can see where the edges are all chipped up so yeah all that is i need to do nickel um, and I need to somehow get hard facing on there too. So I might just grind off a little bit. Like I'm not going to do it over there. You know, if it doesn't, if it's pretty sharp, I'm not going to do it. But um, where it is chipped, I'm going to grind. I have to grind back quite a bit so I can do a pass of nickel and then over that hard face or over that maybe nickel soft. So I'm going to have to do, I'm going to have to do some stainless and then hard facing. So it's uh, quite a bit of, quite a lot of welding in a very small space. But anyway, I'll figure that out. Um, I'll also ask him what he wants because he might just have these for decorative purposes. Then I can just do nickel and clean it up and then that's done. Um, whereas if he's gonna use the things, um, obviously I guess I should repair them because if he sells them one day, they're gonna get used. They're gonna get used at some stage. So yeah, anyone that wants an animal shouldn't buy a Vulcan. But anyway, it is what it is. And then, um, yeah, there's moved those around. Sorry about my socks and my markers. Markers are for there, and then socks are for when it gets raining here at the workshop, my shoes get wet. But yeah, I've moved that over. Um, so since you guys last saw it, I did dip both of these. Um, I just dipped them and then put rust convert on. Um, that oil over there is running from um, one of, not that one, I think that one, when I oiled it, I put it on top and then the oil ran down a bit, but yeah, um, it's point is oiling them because uh, when I have to heat them, it's then gonna smoke like crazy. So I thought I'll just get them dipped, that way they can at least be a little bit there. And then when I start cutting and everything like that, that's when, because also I think once, I haven't measured, but once this is all welded together, it's not gonna fit my electrolysis dip. So um, worst case scenario, um, I'm gonna, obviously, uh, if I didn't dip them now individually, I would be able to dip them. So now they, the rust is off and it's got rust converter on it. So worst case scenario, I'll have to just wire brush it and then obviously redo the rust converter when it's done and then seal it with linseed oil when they're done. So that was the plan there. 
Um, here's the peter out. I just moved that into a nice little corner so I can look at it and plan. These are the two that I'm not keeping. Um, well, there's three, the other little one, but I need to still get that. Um, so yeah, I'm just putting my my not keeping pile over there. So like, um, if someone says, hey, do you have an anvil for sale? I'll say, well, there's three, because there's another little one over there outside. But I can say, well, there's those three to choose from. Obviously, going from heaviest, 137, 125, and then I think the other one is 67. So it depends on what size they want. Um, then this is also has to be done. Um, my good old saw maker's vice. Um, be seeing better days. Got a crack there. Got a crack coming through there. And then it's got a crack on the leg somewhere. There's a join. Can't see it right now. But anyway, that's not too difficult because all you do over there is you cut, you bevel it all the way through and then heat it so and then close the jaw, clamp the jaw so that they close and then weld from there. Um, so you just lay beads in there and then build it up. It's not very difficult, but it's just, it's time which I don't really have. But um, I was just very happy to be able to get that because that is a, it's a 30 centimeter wide jaw. I don't know what that is in inches, but I mean, that's a, I mean, my hands are not, not tiny. They're not the biggest hands, but I mean, that comes from to the middle of my forearm. Um, you can see that with my elbow. So that's a big old jaw. Yeah, so that's what's going on here. I'll time lapse now as we put the anvils in the dip and go from there. Anyway, so these were on for a few days. Um, so I need to now just pull everything out and wash it, but um, don't have time right now. So well, that will come later on in the video. Um, just thought I'd show you guys why there hasn't really been a lot of anvil stuff going on. Okay, so I've got a little bit of time. Um, we're waiting for steel. Um, I'm waiting for the guys to wrap so uh, I can carry on painting some lamps next door. Anyway, so I've got a little bit of time. I'm gonna quickly pull the Trenton. I, wanted, I really wanna do the Trenton first. So I'm gonna pull the Trenton out of the dip and then wire wheel it. Um, there are a few berries that I wanna take down with a flapper wheel. Um, pro tip about a flapper wheel and an anvil, it's very frowned upon, but use, if there are any berries and stuff like on this little Trenton, use a worn out flapper wheel. So you're not taking a lot of material off, you have a lot of control over how much you take off. Um, you'll see my flapper wheel, I'll show you guys on the grinder back there. Um, it's very worn out, so I'm not gonna be taking a lot off, I just really wanna take off the berries um, and where there, are, where there is a little bit of welding. There is a little bit of welding right next to the serial number on the foot, so I'm gonna be very careful there because obviously I want the serial number so I can see what date it was manufactured and everything like that. Um, cool, so the anvils are currently in the dip. I'll put you guys on time lapse while I pull that uh, little Trenton out and then take it over to the table and start cleaning. So I'm gonna take it outside and just give it a little uh, brush off by hand. You can see all of the scale and stuff like that that's accumulated as the um, sediment settles. Cause obviously it's been in the dip now for a long time after I stopped electrolysis. So the sediment is now settled and it's stuck on here. So um, it comes off like that, but uh, I just don't want that stuff shooting all over me with an angle grinder. So I'm gonna quickly take it outside um, give it a little, uh, give it a little wire, wire brush just by hand, you know, with one of these nice little fine wire brushes. You can see there already how it's coming off. So I'm going to do that. Um, and then, uh, yeah, that's it. So I don't know what went wrong in this electrolysis process, but I, for some reason, don't remember this anvil having so much pitting. Um, I know that I definitely did connect it right. I, I doubted myself now while cleaning it, and I thought maybe I had made these the um, electrodes, and then uh, so I switched positive and negative, but I definitely did not do that. Um, so I don't know. 
honestly don't know what's going on here why it's so i mean because i don't remember it being this pitted i must just check in the videos before but i mean you can see here all that pitting it's it's really bad um so yeah anyway any, so that is the berries i was talking about that's obviously where the base is welded to the top originally so i only clean those berries off there's some welding over here on the feet um which i'm gonna do but um yeah i'm really disappointed in the in all of this pitting i don't i don't remember there being this much rust on this anvil anyways um there are the serial numbers luckily they are visible that is the little bit of welding that i need to clean up um that is on top of that number five um but everything else is pretty good um we can clean that up so i'm gonna do that now trenton is still visible which is really nice but um yeah i just want to see i'm not gonna i might uh sand this face to get this smooth again and usable because i really actually did want to use this anvil um, and the pitting is not i'm not gonna i'm not gonna sand it all out um but just over here on the heel section there's a berry over there that i have to sand off anyway so um i'm gonna do that but um yeah very very disappointed with um, the way i want to see how the pfp came out um and see if it's the same finish um but yeah very disappointed in um how this was etched um I, like i said i don't know what i did wrong uh, maybe it's time that i change up my my liquid though and just uh, make a new mixture of electrolysis and soda ash well the water and soda ash um maybe that is the reason why i did that but yeah do you guys know what happened here let me know in the comments because um that is very disappointing on a nice little anvil um anyway i'm luckily i can fix it um i know how to um it's just disappointing on such a nice clean little anvil that that happened um cool i'm gonna put you guys on time lapse oh just wanted to quickly show you uh nice worn out flapper wheel um so that i'm not taking too much material off at a time i probably will use a new flapper wheel um for the face and the horn and the cutting table So I know I mentioned uh, earlier on in the video that I'm not going to be cut or grinding this face, but um, the pitting was actually just so, so deep. So I had no choice but to cup grind. And then later on, you'll see I even grind with a grinding disc to try and get the deep pits out. And then I come over with a cup grinder and then later on come over with um, a sanding disc. So I did have a look back at um, the footage of uh, when I was talking about little anvils. I'll link that video in the description. But um, this definitely was not pitted. The face was perfect. So I don't know how this happened, um, but uh, I'm very disappointed in this. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna drain the dip and um, yeah, re redo a um, soda ash and water mixture. Um, I think maybe there's too high a concentration of soda ash or too little, I really don't know, but I can't have this happening again um as you can see there is still some pitting here um and i have no choice i mean this anvil is, is too perfect to leave like this so um I, I am gonna have to carry on grinding until that is out um we're like one mil away from from it being flat so i am gonna just keep on taking this down um but yeah very disappointing so um very sorry that you guys had to see me wreck a beautiful anvil um, but I guess this is the school fees um, that I pay um, so that you guys don't have to. Um, the horn came out really nice. Um, there wasn't too much deep pitting there. There is a deep pit over there on the cutting table. I'm going to leave that. Um, I don't want to take too much material down. Um, but yeah, I'm using a 40 grit. Uh, that's what I was using here on the horn. A uh, new 40 grit flapper wheel um and this is my new 80 grit flapper which i will polish the face with after i've gotten these pits out um you can see the serial number is still clear um luckily um so it's a 50 pound anvil and the serial number is two zero three two four five 
Um, so that's very cool. And uh, you can see the nice factory weld there, which is also very nice. Um, you can still see very clearly the Trenton sign. Um, I will put paints in there to um, accentuate those markings. Um, so I'm not too worried about that. Um, you, know, you can see there's still a little bit of grime inside there. So I will, um, I'll wire wheel that with a drilling machine. Um, but yeah, um, yeah, I don't know how that happened. Um, there's no markings on this side underneath the heel. Um, again, nice factory weld seam. You can see how he welded down and then wrapped around and then went back. Very, very cool. <laughs> um, I really like that. That's already a nice feature. Um, the PFP looks fine. Um, I did go and have a look at it in the dip. Um, it looks like there was also a lot of that build up on it, but um, it doesn't seem to have pits it as bad as this. We'll only know when we start wire brushing it. But yeah, sorry guys, it's crazy, eh? I, I don't know how this happened, but please leave in the comments. Um, I would like to know how to avoid this problem in the future. I've never had this before, and I'm very diff disappointed that it didn't happen on any of the other broken anvils. Why did it have to happen on a perfectly usable, um, pretty much the best anvil that I've ever bought? <laughs> And then I stuff it up. Um, so yeah, disappointed about that, but um, let me know um, for you guys who have electrolysis before how and what I did wrong um, so that I can learn from my mistakes. Okay, so it has been a minute. Um, wow, probably around about two months, I would imagine. You can see the surface rust that's accumulated on the little Trenton. Um, the pits that are left from um, grinding it, I have not had any time at all. Um, and I have a little bit today. So, um, yeah, um, I'm going to see if I can um, attack this face and get the rest of this pitting out. Um, I have to go down probably another mill throughout the whole face, which is probably going to take a while. Um, and then the other stuff I haven't even taken out of the dip yet, um, which is quite bad. <sighs> um, you can sort of see it there. Um, try and get better angles. So there's the little PFP anvil and then a whole lot of the, um, what do you call these things? Ah, tooling or whatever. I've lost the, I've lost the word. Anyways, so that's still still all in the dip. Um, like I said, it's just been, it's been so crazy. I have not had any time. Um, nothing in here has changed at all. Um, I haven't bought any new, new anvils. I haven't bought anything else. Everything is exactly as you last saw it. So um, I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit of work done today um, while I have a minute uh, and then we'll see where we get. Okay, so that is it. Um, the pits are all out. Like I said, this is uh, one of my worst nightmares because this anvil was perfect as you saw in the videos and the pictures before it went in and um, something went wrong in the electrolysis dip and um, that is what pitted it so deeply. So um, I've saved it to the best I can. The face is now pretty much, you know, mirror. You can see like some light scratches over there. Um, I've just deburred the Hardy and Pritchell hole, just with a file, and then I've just, 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 just taken off the burr off of the edges, um, so that that is still sharp. I mean, you, I could probably cut sheet metal on those edges, that's how sharp they are still. Um, I've left that factory uh, sort of chamfer on here. You can see there is some pitting in it, but I'm not gonna touch that. Um, I want to not do as little to this anvil as possible. Um, I've already, I feel like I've already wrecked it enough. Um, yeah, so this is going to be pretty much the only video uh, that you guys will probably ever see where I take an anvil and make it worse off than it came to me in. But anyway, I guess that's just uh, subjective to what you guys think. Um, you can see all the pitting over here. 
um, yeah, like I said, I mean, this none of this was here. Not that I saw at least, I mean, there was paint over it, but I didn't see damage like that. Um, Trenton is still very, very clearly visible, which is nice. So I will decal that so that um, that stands out nicely. Um, the serial number and weight stamp is still good. Um, I'll be able to, you know, bring that out nicely with some white paint. But other than that, um, this anvil is done. I'm not doing anything more to it. Um, yeah, so that is my Trenton that I was very, very excited about and then yeah, kind of, kind of wrecked it a little bit. Um, but yeah, I'm not gonna even sand here. I'm gonna just put the rust removal on there and work that off with a wire brush. Um, I don't want to sand any more than I have to on this anvil. Um, and then yeah, we'll see how the PFP comes out. Um, yeah, hopefully that one isn't as bad as this, but we'll have to just wait and see. Okay, so this time I'm gonna be letting the rust converter soak in a little bit longer. Um, and then I will be wire brushing with the drilling machine um, over the so I'll probably do a few coats of rust converter just because it has been standing for so long. Um, so yeah, uh, I just wanted to penetrate this bit of surface rust that's here um, on the anvil. Obviously the horn, which is where it was shiny like that, has got the most of it. Um, and then the body of the anvil will probably also have quite a bit. So I'm just, I wanted to work as well as it can. I mean, it has its, um, its limits, you know, it's not magic, but um, yeah, I want the rust converter to work as much as it can. And then um, I will um, wire brush it off, wipe it off, wire brush it off. And then yeah, probably do this maybe two or three times. So I must admit, as disappointed as I was in myself, that I let the pitting happen, um, I am still very, very chuffed with this little Trenton. Um, is it as good as it could have been? Probably not. Is it still very, very, very good? Yes. I mean, that stamp is perfect. Um, it's amazing to see, I was having a look underneath the horn over here and it's so cool to see let me try and get a bit of better lighting um you can still see the mold coat on the cast base um this like it almost looks like grayscale that's like a it's a mold coat that they use inside the molds um to stop the steel from getting contaminated by the sand we use it on the aluminium side as well um, and I mean, those weld seams are like freaking perfect. I mean, he would have come along like that, then a little curve and then gone back that way. And I mean, that is just so, so cool, you know? Um, yeah, it's a really, really nice little anvil. You know, the face is really nice now. The horn is nice. It's a completely usable anvil. Um, if I didn't document this restoration, no one would have, no one would have ever known better, <laughs> but, um, I definitely um, feel like this should be out there to well, either encourage people that thought they were doing an anvil a, a favor by restoring it and ended up, you know, not doing as good a job as they expected, um, because I certainly expected myself to do better here. Um, but, you know, at the end of the day, we're still sitting with a really, really pretty anvil. 
Um, I'm still glad it ended up in my hands um, because even although I got it to pit like that from electrolysis dip, I do still feel like I did it a favor and I still feel like it's in good hands, you know. Um, so yeah, I guess this is gonna be a little bit of a different uh, video, um, but I'm really still happy with it. You know, it's a really nice little 50 pound Trenton. It's gonna go great with my other little, um, my other little anvils. Um, yeah, I've got these two little military pattern anvils. Um, that's a 60 pound, which is cool because it's actually marked with 60. Um, the face is not great, but uh, being a military pattern anvil, I didn't do anything to that. And then I've got this, um, what is that, 56, 56 pound. Um, really nice markings. I didn't do anything to this either. Um, I didn't touch it with a grinder, I didn't do anything. Um, just marked it. Um, but yeah, really, really nice little military pattern. So the Trenton's going to be at home with these two. And then obviously my little... PFP, which I don't quite know the weight on yet. I'll look for markings, but yeah, I'm excited now to get the decal work done. Um, I'm gonna do that, let it dry, um, and then come with thinners afterwards, uh, clean up the the rest, and then um, yeah, then seal oil, uh, and then it's and it's done. Okay, so this has been drying for a, around about an hour. Um, so what I'm gonna do is just take some thinners, a little bit of paper towel, fold it nice and flat so that when you wipe, you're only wiping over the high spots. And um, yeah, this should do the trick just to get any excess, any excess um, paint off. took quite a lot out of the two over there but I'm not too concerned about that there we go these stampings weren't too deep so it doesn't matter too much that they are not super visible. Um, I think it looks really nice. And then it also doesn't look like I did it today. Give it a little bit of patina. Well, density oil. I'm gonna do the bottom first. That done. Okay guys, so this is the end of the little Trenton restoration. Um, the video does still continue for a good few minutes over here. And I'll basically just give you a rundown of what I've been so busy with um, over this time and why it's taken so long to get another video out. Um, so it's just a little workshop tour and some of the um, decor pieces that we've made. And um, yeah, just me explaining a little bit of the workshop. So if you guys don't wanna see that, you're welcome to head off from here. But if you do, you're welcome to watch through and see sort of what I've been so busy with. So it's the 2nd of February today. Um, we've been open since the 15th of Jan. And um, yeah, so far we've pushed out those tree lamps, that tree lamp. Um, there's two little cast aluminum lamps over there. Another cast aluminum lamp over here. Um, those were from last year. Um, we made these out of steel, so um, it's a cast aluminium base, um, beaten steel um, branches and stuff, and then cast aluminium birds. So those are some candlesticks hold candlestick holders that are going to be going over to the UK. Um, so yeah, it's been a really busy busy time. Let me show you guys upstairs. Um, we made a whole bunch of these tree lamps uh, for stock. Um, so it's been a little bit crazy, which is obviously why there's been minimal um, anvil videos coming out. 
I do have some anvils in the um, electrolysis dip. Uh, that's all last year. We made all that last year. We made all of these tree lamps um, over there. Those are all new. Um, we made these. These are called Sahara lamps. Um, similar to the tree lamps, a little bit different though. Made more of those. Those are from last year. Um, that one is from last year. And then um, I'll show you guys downstairs. Um, Manuel and Benson are busy painting the new stock that we made. So it's been a little crazy. Um, and then we're busy just refinishing um, some older stuff um, from 20 years ago that my uncle made when he ran this business. So there's some tree lamps, some floor trees. Um, made some more of those uh, faces. Um, let me show you guys this, sorry for the bad footage. Um, so these are some Giacometti replica tables that my uncle made 25 years ago. Um, they are cast bronze um, and yeah, they are, they've been outdoors for 20 years. So the paint was all weathered and stuff similar to the bed. I'll show you guys that now. Anyway, so um, yeah, we've been tasked to uh, repaint them and get them looking nice again. Um, these are also cast bronze. They weigh a ton. Um, this face over here is cast bronze. Then we've made these. Um, this is next week's job. You can see how the paint is just sort of peeling off, you know. Um, I actually, <laughs> now that I want to show you guys it, I can't uh, there. You can see how it's just peeling off the gelve. Um, fairly old paint though. Um, then we also had a whole lot of stuff go off for galvanizing yesterday. There was a sign, I'll attach a picture. Creative pictures, so you can't really see what's going on, but um, yeah, the, there's a whole lot of gel that went off yesterday. We're busy making some gates. And we're making this table over here. So it's been a little busy, which is why we haven't really had time. Oh, what we have been doing is putting the the um, the big boy to work. Um, so yeah, uh, we've been using that quite a bit. Um, and this one is sort of, we've been using it, but just not as much as this.